What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another Tropical Forecast here by Age of the Forecast. And we have significant updates here for uh, the rapidly intensifying Hurricane Ida as we it is currently heading for uh, directly the New Orleans vicinity here. And this is obviously a very uh, serious situation as we're looking at overall unsurvivable storm surge across eastern Louisiana, extremely significant wind gusts that may go over 130 miles an hour, watching as well from nearly two feet of rain scattered regions. And this storm is likely to make landfall uh, within the next 30-ish hours or so. So again, time is ticking. And I actually have a special guest today. I have not done a collab in probably over two years. Uh, but in, with my collab right now, I have Justin G, which is basically someone in the uh, Extreme Weather staff team. So he's gonna he's about to introduce himself right now. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm Justin G. I've been forecasting tropics for quite a while. Uh, glad to be here. All right, so yeah, we're gonna try to make this video as fast as possible, guys, because I am planning on live streaming later this evening, and hopefully Justin can join us as well that stream. Because again, the more minds we have the better the knowledge we can provide. So here's a look at the overall satellite imagery here. So we do have, again, a developing uh, pinhole eye right now across uh, that obviously LLC where we had there with an Ida within around a 10 to 15 mile wide uh, eye where you see that very little amount of initiation actual convection. We're actually seeing positive uh, Celsius and temperatures actually. I think we're seeing anywhere from like, I think seven to eight degrees. Uh, Celsius in the eye and what that means is basically we're not having really any initiation or any storms in that region Which is obviously showing you we are seeing a very good looking eye as well as southwest quadrant We do have convection uh, in Celsius getting up to as high as around 85 degrees Celsius and even as well nearly just under 90 degrees Celsius So the southwest quadrant is definitely a very organized part of that system here seeing a lot of uh, we're starting to see a few lightning strikes, but they're not extremely common right now. We're still really trying to get this uh, eye wall to strengthen here and overall get a little bit better. And the one thing is that we're not seeing this uh, become a trend anywhere else. Just the southwest quadrant, so it's not like becoming an absolute monster right now. However, it will get there in the far future as it goes into a more conducive environment. So what are your thoughts here on what we have on IR, Justin? Okay, so I'd agree with what you're uh, saying. In the southwest quadrant, we can see negative 70s, even negative 80s uh, in a very widespread area. And then we can actually see in the northeast quadrant that cloud tops are starting to cool. And from the past few hours, as you can see the um, loop of the infrared imagery, the CDO of Ida has been rather unsymmetrical and cloud tops have been very ragged, uh, ragged and just not very impressive. However, we can see that the eye is starting to rapidly warm and is clearing very quickly uh, and cloud tops are starting to cool basically everywhere other than the northwest quadrant, which has been lacking for quite a while, but will improve as time goes on. And yep, again, basically in summer, this thing's most likely about to go through another eye wall replacement cycle as we're seeing a more this new elongated low become more symmetrical. However, it's not symmetrical just now. But as it goes into a more conducive environment, including the very warm waters, ocean heat content, as well as less vertical shear, this one's going to be an absolute beauty. So here's a look here at satellite, and obviously this is a very intimidating storm, just, be, just based off the look of, it, uh, look of it. Like, even without even liking weather, you can just tell this is a very strong and strengthening, still, hurricane. So you can see there, there's the actual low pressure itself there. I'm not sure that's, what's that, why that's highlight mode. There we go. So there's the actual low pressure there with the, the little small little like dip right there of less convection. That is where that developing core is. As well as seeing overall really strong counterclockwise clockwise flow. It's kind of like a, I guess it's kind of looking like a, like an upside down shrimp there. There you see like the, the, I guess the tail there. And there you see like the head, I guess, for those Wheat shrimp. That's basically what we typically see with a very good trop uh, tropical system. Uh, whether it's a strong hurricane or a developing hurricane, it's typically what you see there. As well, really intense northeastern banding. That actually, I'm not sure why that moved. There we go. So again, very intense northeastern uh, banding here. So even seeing some widespread showers as close as uh, the uh, the St. Petersburg area, actually. But obviously, the low pressure itself is heading for uh, New Orleans. Uh, Grand Isle and overall heading for much of eastern Louisiana. So definitely a pretty big threat for New Orleans. Again, I stress this enough 
This would be the biggest test for New Orleans since Hurricane Katrina 2005. It obviously would not come close to the damage or storm surge. However, it still will be, it still will be extremely significant. So as well as seeing that uh, upper level anti-cyclone within the clockwise uh, kind of diverging cloud tops there, those cumulus, that's where you see that ULAC, which is basically providing a favor environment, even if there is a strong ridge going like that. So what are your thoughts on satellite right now and um, how it looks, Justin? Well, I mean, just like I said for infrared, it looks as classic as you're going to get for a developing and maturing hurricane. You can see that area of low pressure where basically the eye is. And when you look at basically what we're seeing on visible imagery, when you think of a hurricane, that's what you get. You get that banding, you get that center, you get that core, and you get that beautiful and very photogenic eye. And we can see that it is pretty quickly moving right towards uh, New Orleans and parts of Louisiana, southeast Louisiana. So if you are in southeast Louisiana, it's probably too late to evacuate now. Um, but if you can and feel you should, you should. And if you're in a hurricane warning, uh, really, I, should, I, would, I would say it's not even an option. Get out now because sooner or later, you won't be able to. So uh, I'm actually looking at Justin and I DMs because he did send me a few uh, National Weather Service New Orleans and overall National Weather Service uh, tweets here that are very, very intimidating and as well just overall very aggressive in their wording here. And like I did say, this is going to be very significant. We're talking about unsurvival, unsurvival conditions in certain areas. So if you can now is your last chance to evacuate. I'm about to show you guys how the traffic is. I'm actually going to show that very soon here. But here's a tweet by the National Weather Service. This is not NWS New Orleans. This is overall NWS. And it's saying here, overtopping of local levees outside of the hurricane and storm damage risk uh, reduction system is possible where local inundation values may be higher. So basically, we're talking about possibility that maybe these levees probably, there's a chance that they do not withstand the storm surge we're talking about. Because again, I'm about, guys, I'm about to show you guys the storm surge and Please ignore my profile picture on Discord. Please, please ignore my profile picture. Okay, so, and then this one from NWS New Orleans is basically saying, uh, please leave. And this came out a few hours ago, but at this point, it's probably, I'd say within an hour or two, additionally, you don't leave. It's too late. The traffic's going to be too, uh, too, it's not even going to move. The traffic is going to be basically stationary. And as well, just overall, there's probably going to be very little gas, uh, I, I, it, it's just too late, and that's uh, a reason because the there is no mandatory evacuations in New Orleans yet. There's only a state of emergency, so it's saying please leave. Some areas may may be un uninhabitable for weeks, for weeks, and again, that's going to be mainly for the Grand Isle vicinity there, eastern Louisiana, even portion of the New Orleans. And even portion the the Mississippi coast. I mean, it probably won't be like that for weeks there in Mississippi, but it could very well be like that for days in Mississippi. And we're looking overall a dangerous hurricane with quote unquote catastrophic impacts. So again, we're talking about a chance that levees cannot withstand the storm surge. Again, this will be the biggest test not only for New Orleans but their levee system. Again, the levee systems did fail for Katrina. Exactly why we saw twenty eight foot storm surge. Actually, the twenty eight foot storm surge actually happened in Mississippi. But you get the point. We still got over 20-foot storm surge in New Orleans from Katrina, and it was only a Category 3 during landfall. We're talking about a Category 4 potentially as it nears landfall. Will it be like that for the actual landfall? It'll probably still be stronger than Katrina, even if it's not um, its peak strength when it actually hits Louisiana. I mean, there's a chance it could very well be nearing the coast at its peak. Again, looking overall, very warm waters and all that. It's going to continue even on the coast. So again, there's a chance that the levees will not withstand the storm surge. And obviously, again, it's going to allow for a better chance of a higher storm surge, not only in the rural areas, but for downtown New Orleans or for uh, the overall populated areas. So my, uh, again, colleague Justin just told me that the National Heart Center has come out with the 5 o'clock advisory, and Ida is now 105 miles an hour. So as you can tell, it's still strengthening and likely going to be a major hurricane uh, by this uh, evening here, 8 p.m. or 11 p.m. Eastern has been my prediction. So I think we're definitely on track for that. Pressure has not dropped, so at 976, and it has now moved one mile an hour faster than the last update, moving now 16 miles an hour northwestward. But we're about to start seeing this transition from northwest to uh, basically due north, or it's like somewhat due north, basically. 
uh, as it obviously aims for a portion there of uh, New Orleans there. So again, thank you, Justin, for saying for telling me about the actual advisory because I would have completely forgot about the five o'clock advisory. But here's the overall label. Ida rapidly strengthening over the Gulf of Mexico, life-threatening storm surge. Again, this could very well be deadly in many cases because nobody that I know of is 15 feet tall. I mean, potential catastrophic wind damage and flooding rainfall expected to impact the northern Gulf Coast beginning Sunday. So again, Sunday is tomorrow. So tick is the tick. I mean, the clock is ticking. Let's go look at the overall discussion. And we're not going to go all over the overall the whole discussion because again, this video is already 11 minutes long. And I don't want to make it like a 30 minute summary or a 30 minute video because obviously 30 minutes and you're watching in Louisiana, 30 minutes could be uh, a pretty big difference whether you're going to leave or not. So peak still 130 miles an hour. So it has gone down previously. It was 140, but it's still 130. I mean, it's still obviously uh, pretty strong at 130. So likely to become 125 by the next 24 hour, right? but yeah, by the next 24 hours, basically. So continuing that rapid intensification strength. Uh, let's get look through the overall sm small portions of the key message again likely to bring in catastrophic flooding across southeast Louisiana coastal Mississippi there we're looking at maybe over 20 inches of rain some areas damaging winds gusts obviously power outages are basically guaranteed uh, again specifically for the big cities like New Orleans power system uh, Ida is expected to become extremely dangerous for major hurricane when it reaches the coast of Louisiana hurricane force winds are expected Sunday in portions of the hurricane warning area along the Louisiana coast, including downtown New Orleans and the overall metro area, and conditions will start diminishing by tonight. Uh, I think the National Weather Service in New Orleans said as early as tonight we will start seeing tropical storm force winds, gust, uh, and then of course the first key message is danger of danger to life. There is obviously if you are waiting out the system and you're in the southeast coast of Louisiana, you are risking your life and you are putting your life in your own hands. Uh, by that action. So what are your thoughts on the five o'clock advisory and what are your thoughts on the overall key message Justin on the latest update? Uh, it's no surprise that they upgraded uh, Aida to 105 miles per hour. I'm not surprised by that in any way shape or form. Um, I think that if you are in southeast Louisiana, especially on the coast and you're not evacuating, you are putting your own life in jeopardy like Adrian said and they now have at closest path or at closest pass to new orleans and i mean we're, not, we're mentioning new orleans a lot because it's the main it's the biggest city really in the gulf coast and they have now making a closest pass at 38 miles west of new orleans so i know for one who's been tracking tropical systems for a while 38 miles at closest pass will not make a difference you're still going to be in the eyeball and you're still going to get devastating impacts and they do have a landfall 10 to 15 miles west of Grand Isle. So if you're in Grand Isle and haven't evacuated, uh, I hate to say it, but you're really just not smart. All right, so I've not really done this in the past videos for U.S. landfalls or any landfall whatsoever, but I decided it's time to change and I should become more detailed when it comes to life-threatening situations, right? That's a smart idea. So here's a look at the overall, uh, I guess, the overall um, traffic, live traffic as of now. So you can see, obviously, we're seeing traffic all the way, I mean, just all across the northern, the big northern Gulf cities here. Uh, Mobile, uh, Biloxi as well, seeing some, some, moderate, um, some moderate traffic. Even in Houston is getting some overall pretty significant traffic. But look at these areas here near New Orleans and areas that are actually on bordering states such as Texas. Look at Texas, for example. We're seeing extremely slow almost stationary almost stationary traffic near the border of texas uh, again people should be fleeing uh this vicinity i mean look at northeast uh just look at northeast of new orleans uh this is obviously going into mississippi there uh let's see here this is a uh, high this is uh interstate 10 and then going to interstate 59 we're seeing extreme almost stationary uh stationary uh, traffic as people are fleeing the city of new orleans you can see now across downtown there are a lot of areas of extreme to slow to fast traffic so there's traffic all over the place as well i really want to point out one specific area for traffic and one only and that is grand isle because grand isle is seeing not only super slow traffic but stationary traffic the traffic is not moving one 
bit. And you know why? It's because Grand Isle is in the middle of the actual uh, direct landfall path. I mean, they're going to get absolutely hammered. If you're a Grand Isle and you're watching this right now and you have not left already, I'm sorry to say this. I am extremely sorry to say this. But there is a chance that this could be the last storm that you see. I, I hate to say it like that, but this is talking about 15 or even more storm surge. And Grand Isle is in the high area of flash flooding. They are obviously in a hurricane warning. They are in a storm surge warning. And we may see more than 15 feet storm surge in the general vicinity of Grand Isle. I mean, look at the look at the geography. It's a small little island. And if this does make a landfall to category four, again, you're like way like from New Orleans. So you're not gonna get any threats or there's not gonna be any you're not gonna see any hope of it weakening because this is this little land is not gonna affect it much. It's not gonna be so it actually gets towards the actual main inland part uh part of louisiana but look at this little small houses like this are not going to withstand something like that obviously it's not like it's going to be like catastrophic and it's unrecognizable like dorian but this is going to be definitely a complete different uh image i guarantee if we look at it like three days later and we look at the same exact area it's going to be hard to recognize some areas you can maybe recognize some parts uh but as well as the traffic is pretty significant as well uh, kind of leaving the airport or at least towards the airport near Grand Isle. So I wanted to really point out Grand Isle because obviously they are basically not only an island uh, kind of far off the general vicinity, but they're in a very swampy terrain. And for those who know what brown ocean, brown ocean effect is, it's basically when storms form over swampy lands uh, or inland vicinities. And that's obviously, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but what I'm trying to aim is that this is not going to weaken in your air just because you're a small island, just because you are uh, land. And of course, a lot of this vicinity is under sea level. And you can obviously kind of tell with the mouth of the river right here. And it's obviously going to allow for some significant storm surge and above water uh, sea levels uh, or above water levels to go into downtown New Orleans. So not only are we watching out for storm surge, but overall uh, just, extreme, uh, just extreme conditions, not only in the actual Atlantic coast, but the, the mouth of the river. What are your thoughts on this, Justin? And how much, like, how, like, look at all, like, the, um, uh, not power actors, sorry, the, the traffic going all the way to Mobile. Like, what are your thoughts on this? Like, you, do you think it's too late to leave now? Like, what do you, what do you say? Um, uh, as of right now, us making this video, I know it is five o'clock Eastern time. I think now is your last chance to leave. If you don't leave, you are putting your life in danger. And in about two hours, I would say, then you're going to be done. You can't leave after that, and you're just going to have to sit and ride this out. And if you're in places like Grand Isle, there's a chance you could go into this storm and not come out. I'm not saying that for people that are in in New Orleans, say, because they're in a major city. However, you're still putting your life in danger if you are in New Orleans and not leaving. The cone continues to shift east, and the storm continues to shift east. And it looks like a direct impact to New Orleans is very possible at this point. And I think that the traffic's just going to continue to get heavier, and I really do hope it clears by tomorrow once the storm starts making landfall, but it's really uncertain whether it will just because there is so much traffic. So here's the latest look here at the overall 5 o'clock advisory or 4 o'clock central time um, cone here for the National Herc Center. You can see this is extremely symmetrical. I mean, that looks like... Uh, I mean, that, that's just beautifully built. This storm is beautifully, beautifully, beautiful. Oh, my gosh. Beautifully built. There we go. I could not get that word out. Okay, there you see, though. Very symmetrical. Not necessarily really elongated, really, at this point. Uh, I mean, the, the tropical storm current wind sustained is basically very evenly distributed across from the LLC, basically. So, for those who know how to find, like, like I guess, like, uh, the radius, something like that, you guys would know what I'm talking about. And there you see, as well, this uh, hurricane wind field is actually not too jabby as well. It's going to continue to really really expand as this storm strengthens again so has all that really warm each ocean heat content within the general vicinity here and it's going to just continue to strengthen it's already 105 now and it, like justin told me earlier today that it's barely even in the actual main ocean heat content bubble of 200 meters of 80 degrees fahrenheit and it's going to about to go through that tonight and obviously we all know nighttime is the best time for storms to rapidly intensify you see a cooler atmosphere aligned for colder cloud tops and as well uh overall more widespread convection journal maximums obviously and overall that's just the best chance so the fact that we have that nighttime and then we have the big ocean a content at the exact same time 
it's just bound for this storm to be an absolute monster. So again, like we did see, Nash and Hershner wants 130 there for landfall. And like we just talked about Cedar Key, or not Cedar Key, sorry, that's in Florida, a uh, Grand Isle. They're right in the basically in, in, the, in the path of the northeast quadrant. And not the northeast quadrant of the actual outer band, but the northeast quadrant of the eye wall, which is the most intense part of the storm right now. Or not, the, yeah, that's where we had the strongest wind, but right now the southwest quadrant has the most amount of convection, but that will most likely change. But again, hurricane warnings here for a lot of even south central Louisiana there. But like Justin mentioned as well earlier on, this track has shifted eastward, and it looks like New Orleans may have a chance or increasing chance to get an athlete direct hit which will most likely lead to again maybe over 15 foot storm surge within that general vicinity and then tropical storm warnings all the way from cameron louisiana all the way up to mobile and near the pensacola region likely to stay as a hurricane as it goes directly over baton rouge so obviously we, we for people who like don't know capitals you probably think new orleans was the capital but no baton rouge is the capital of louisiana and based on this map, and based on this forecast, it's going to go straight over Baton Rouge as a Category 1 hurricane. And Baton Rouge typically is not really used to getting hurricanes sustained. I know they're like in Louisiana, and I get that. But typically, like we saw Laura, like they typically kind of just go like that, and they rapidly weaken over land. But this one's going to stay rather strong, specifically across Louisiana. And then it becomes a tropical storm once again. The big concern, though, not many people have mentioned this that I know of on YouTube, but the Mississippi River right here is going to get absolutely drenched, and we may see significant and even deadly inland, inland flooding here. I mean, I don't want to bring up Nashville, but for those who saw the Nashville flooding there, like last week, that could very well be possible. Uh, maybe less severe, because I think it was like three or four feet in Nashville. Obviously less severe, but we may still see a very similar scenario where there is significant flooding uh, in far inland areas, so keeping a very close eye on that. We're looking at maybe eight inches within just certain, uh, just a few hours, and then becomes a tropical depression as it goes over areas like Jackson, and then um, goes through Tupelo, and then aiming for Nashville. Of course, Nashville's on the list now uh, for a tropical depression. Uh, but let's now get a look at the overall, uh, more zoomed in on the actual warnings and advisories and alerts we have. So again, the pink is uh the purple is no bueno that is where we have the hurricane warning so hurricane warnings go far inland very far inland that's because obviously it's not going to weaken that quickly over land so it's going to probably be uh sustained 80 or maybe 85 if it goes within the vicinity of baton rouge the baton rouge new orleans and grand isle are all those cities that we're really watching out for uh within louisiana as well morgan city's under that as well tropical storm warnings go all the way from the texas border including lake charles they're all the way up to mobile and hattiesburg is under one as well and then these watches these tropical storm watches go all the way as far north as jackson and as well monroe louisiana and i guess because there's going to still be a tropical storm sustained all the way up into uh louisiana and as well portions there of uh arkansas not arkansas sorry of mississippi so now one thing i really want to keep a close eye on is a storm surge here and i know Justin has not talked in like five minutes, uh, but that was planned. So he's going to talk very soon here. But look at the storm surge above ground level. Again, we all know that New Orleans and Southeast Louisiana is below sea level. And that's why Katrina did what it did. And that's why hurricanes are such big threats here when they head for areas like this. And that's the same, very, sim very similar scenario for the Keys in Florida. But there you see 10 to 15 foot storm surge across Southeast Louisiana with 7 to 11 foot storm surge here across portions of southeast Mississippi, uh, sorry, southwest Mississippi and southeast Louisiana, with 4 to 7 foot of widespread across New Orleans and as well near uh, Biloxi, and then 2 to 4 feet all the way up to Mobile. But let's forget about the other places right now. We're specifically focused for the 10 to 15 and the 7 to 11. So, not the gas station, but the storm surge. But yeah, 10 to 15 foot storm surge. I mean, that's unsurvivable. For those who have common sense, no one gets that tall and for those who have seen videos of storm surge that high it's basically like a flowing river in a city it, there's currents in storm surge so if you get caught up in the storm surge because you're outside or you're trying to evacuate last minute storm surge is obviously the biggest killer within hurricanes not the winds but storm surge and flooding so what are your thoughts on this justin and the storm surge and how people should handle it if they stay well, if you stay uh, in 
they say you're in places like Grand Isle where it's 10 to 15 foot storms, so it likely will be higher in places. Um, well, you can't handle it. You can, as I, I, when I was talking to one of my close friends yesterday who also knows a lot about meteorology, who uh, actually we collaborate with Adrian a lot and we're friends with him and we work on the same team, he said a great quote. He said, you can run or you can hide from winds, but you have to run from storm surge. And you can't run from storm surge because at one point it's just going to take over. You can't, nobody's 10 or 15 feet tall. We know that. It's not humanly possible. And really, there's no way to get away from it. You have to go to a higher floor and really 15 feet, that's still not high. The, a higher floor isn't high enough in most places. Um. I am looking at recon data, and this has to do a lot with storm surge because the bigger the size of a wind field, the usually the larger storm surge impacts there is. And recon is finding that the wind field of Ida has expanded greatly, and that there is 84 knot um, flight level winds well away from the eye wall, with 70 knot uh, surface winds also well away from the eye wall. So I'm very nervous to see what recon is going to find, but it is known that the wind field is expanding greatly, uh, and storm surge impact will likely be a lot um, more significant. And speaking of recon, I have not forgot about that. I'll be showing that at the very end of the video so that you guys can get an overall overall look at what they see. But again, like Justin said, the larger the wind field, basically the wider the spread, the storm surge. And probably for those people who are wondering why is the storm surge high across these areas, it's because obviously with the counterclockwise flow, we, what you see with low pressures and hurricanes, that flow is going to pick up the waves and take it for the areas that are just to the east of the main landfall. In some parts, sometimes if it's very symmetrical, it's sort of like it is now, you may see the worst peak as well just west of the low pressure landfall. So based on the national nurse, and they want to have it kind of hit right here. But I personally think it could very well go near here. Again, I just circled base. I just went over New Orleans. I know I didn't do that on purpose. I'm just saying. I'm not trying to scare you by going straight over New Orleans, but that's most likely based on the new circulation of the low pressure and where it's been found. It's further eastward than the edge of the track. It's likely going to get a lot closer to New Orleans than what people are thinking. So again, you're going to be seeing a lot of that really intense storm surge just the northeast of the actual landfall. And then when it's very symmetrical, same thing will happen just to the west of the, the low pressure. So let's not get a look here. At the flash flooding threat, we're gonna kind of go very fast throughout this because the video is already rather long. So we do have a high risk there across uh, portions of southeast Louisiana for flash flooding, which is 50% uh, chance, which is extremely high and then moderate going all the way up to central Mississippi and northern Mississippi. So again, like I did say, gonna be a pretty big threat there within uh, inland portions as well. Uh, here's a more detailed than the actual total is gonna get maybe over 15 to 20 inches and even maybe over 20 inches across Louisiana and another. I guess and more accurate is the weather prediction center and they actually want to have scattered spots they're just off the coast of 20 plus inches of rainfall even seeing significant six to ten inches all the way near mobile so significant flooding there and that's going to continue as it goes all the way northward into even inland mississippi and nashville we're going to get some pretty overall significant amount of uh, overall rain i mean this is going to be not only a big coastal flooding threat but as well pretty far inland uh, threat Wave heights we have at the moment here are going to get waves of over 25 feet at this point, and I will go to the actual future forecast of the waves a little bit later into the video. So here's that look at the NAM 3 kilometer here, and I know NAM 3 kilometer, I bash it all the time for tropics, but it's pretty accurate when it comes to just simulating radar and composite reflectivity, so that's exactly why I'm using that, and I don't want to make the video super long, so I'm not showing the GFS, CMT, year, and all that, and all that fun stuff. So again, starting to see... A few of those outer bands starting to affect portions of Louisiana as early as, let's see here, the next six hours or so, and that's going to start really diminishing here. When we wake up really tomorrow morning, and I'm going to start really seeing that pretty intense storm there. See, really heavy rain already across portions there, Grand Isle, portions of southeast Louisiana by the next 20 hours or so, and then likely to make landfall uh, just to the west of Grand Isle there at 24 hours. So basically within 24 hours now, 24 hours from now, We'll be watching out for the actual landfall, and I will most likely live stream that landfall. Hopefully, Justin can uh, come with us during the actual landfall, and I will discuss with him that later on and ask him if he wants to join us. But here's a look here at the next as it obviously makes landfall. It's going to bring in still extreme, and I mean extreme flooding here, specifically on the eastern quadrant. So a lot of that initiation and really strong thunderstorms and overall downpours is going to be specifically centered across the eastern quadrants, like I did say. 
in the very beginning of the video that a lot we just saw on satellites or uh, what we saw on uh, IR will change. We will start seeing more convection and initiation just on the eastern quadrant with uh, the less significant convection on the western quadrant. But right now, it's still the way it is. But here's the GFS here. GFS wants to have just an absolute monster storm there, 93 miles an hour. Then having to make a landfall at 102 miles an hour. The thing is, though, uh, that means that means the GFS is behind on this system because they only have it getting to 102 miles an hour as a landfall. It's most likely to be a lot stronger than that. But overall, you can kind of get the idea. But let's not get a look at let's not get a look at the overall NAM. So I'm gonna uh, move my screen around just like that so I can actually look at the NAM here. I don't know why. Sometimes I just have to uh, move my screen here like that. There we go. So let's get a look at the NAM. And obviously the NAM is going to be a little bit more reasonable. And when I mean reasonable, um, they show 140 miles an hour. Yes, 140 miles an hour. Actually, they have a, oh, actually they have 146. So I think 146 is a pretty big stretch as of now. That's getting very close to lower strength. But I think this could very well be a very intense storm. I think 130, 140 maybe maybe 145 is reasonable but they want to get it very close to 150 which is still a pretty big stretch but overall again very symmetrical and even if it's 140 150 130 it's still gonna be catastrophic but there's a look here very intense storm right here uh, of course very symmetrical uh so even areas west of the actual landfall will get absolutely hammered and look at the uh grand isle look at grand isle getting over 100 miles an hour there and again People are going to wait the storm out. That's just that's just not smart at all. I mean, they're, they're going to get absolutely hammered. Look at New Orleans then getting here. Really strong winds here. I think that due to this whole eastern shift that the NAM 3 kilometers is a little bit invalid at this point because they have been going pretty far west. And it's most likely going to make landfall. They have it making landfall here. But it's most likely going like, to make, make landfall here, which would be a completely different story for eastern Louisiana. And then, let's actually go look at the 10-meter wind wind gusts because i'm actually very interested to see the gusts here for the nam and they they want to get gusts up to 180 miles an hour i mean just think about that 180 miles an hour i mean think about the highway for example let's say the highway speed in louisiana is 75 miles an hour i don't know if that's true or not let's just go with 80. let's say the max speed in the highway in louisiana is 80 miles an hour right think about that think about the amount of force in a car but if the NAM verified, which I think is still a little bit over, I think it's overdoing it a little bit, but it's a lot more reasonable than GFS. So I'm using the NAM as, as an example. Think about that 80 miles an hour car, the amount of force. But 180, math, is 100 miles an hour stronger than 80. So imagine a car going 180 miles an hour and you're sending, there's an object in the middle of the road. Imagine the force. It's exactly what we're going to be seeing here. Extreme amount of force, extreme gust. I um, mean, this is not going to be fun at all. Guaranteed power outages, guaranteed catastrophic damage here. Catastrophic damage is likely. We're probably going to be seeing very similar damage to what we saw with Delta, but probably worse because considering it's in a more populated and urban area than Cameron, Louisiana. And then last but not least, we're going to be looking at the wave heights. And the, I'm just going to go straight ahead towards the landfall area. They actually want to get 42 feet, 42 foot waves, 42 foot waves. I mean, think about that, 42 foot waves, and then to the actual coast itself, we're talking about probably waves on the actual coast itself over 20 feet here. And actually, according to this, Grant Isle and that vicinity may get the worst wave of over maybe 20 foot waves on the actual coast itself, which would bring an extreme storm surge. So guys, this is going to be the video for now. I know it was really, really long, and I know probably... Probably like well, how am I gonna, all right that's not the point so i yes yeah, very long video but i'm most likely gonna stream here later today as we get more updates and more recon data and overall all that fun stuff with the 18z runs and 0z runs so i will will most likely stream this event tonight and tomorrow i'm not sure if i'm going to stream 100 tonight but it's very very likely but there is a 100 chance i stream tomorrow so hope you, hope you guys enjoy the video and i want to thank you guys justin for joining uh this video with us most likely going to join us in the stream today uh any uh, anything you want to say before we close out the video just any like pointer or anything like uh i guess uh how to pr prepare or just any last things you want to say really at this point preparing is not an option either getting out or hoping for the best you should have prepared if you're in south east Lu southeast louisiana yesterday or earlier today yeah that's a hard truth so if you didn't evacuate 
it's hard truth that you're not the smartest person alive. But we will see you guys later, and thank you guys so much for joining us.